Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio with Science Buddies, and in this video, I'll show you how to make your own unicorn art bot. Here are the supplies you'll need to make your art bot. You will need two AA batteries, a battery holder, and a small DC motor. These electronic parts are available in a kit that you can find linked in the description of this video. You will also need an assortment of craft supplies, including a paper or plastic cup, four markers, a cork, some electrical tape, scissors, a hobby knife or other sharp object that you can use to poke some holes in the cup, and googly eyes and other craft supplies to decorate your unicorn, like some paper if you would like to give it a horn and ears. To get started, take the motor, the cup, and the hobby knife. Now these knives are very sharp, so make sure you have adult supervision for this part. You are going to use the knife to poke two holes in the cup that are the same spacing apart as the wires on the motor. And you're going to do that about halfway up the height of the cup. So I'm going to use the motor as a visual indicator here. Carefully poke a hole through the cup. Do not put your hands behind where you're poking that blade through because you don't want to poke yourself in the fingers. And once you've gotten the blade poked through a little bit, you're going to twist it to widen the hole so the wires from the motor will fit through. And then you're going to repeat that again at the correct spacing so the wires from the motor will fit through these two holes. And again, twist to widen the hole. Once you've done that for both holes, you should be able to take the wires from your motor and feed them through the holes into the inside of the cup and have the motor sit not perfectly flat, but roughly on the outer face of the cup like this. Now, we don't just want to rely on the friction of those wires to hold the motor in place because your art bot is going to be wobbling around, so you can use a few pieces of tape to securely attach the motor to the cup so it does not fall out once your robot starts wobbling. Now that we have the motor securely attached with tape, it's time to connect the battery pack to make a circuit so the motor will spin. So your battery pack has a cover on it. There may be a small screw holding the cover on. If the screw is there, you can use a small Phillips head screwdriver to remove it. And then you just press gently to slide the cover off the battery pack. You're then going to take your batteries and make sure the plus signs on the battery line up with the plus sign on the inside of the container or the flat end of the battery that does not have this little bump on it should go against the metal spring, which is the negative side. So put the two batteries in. Again, make sure you don't get these backwards. And then you slide the cover back on and snap it into place. Next, make sure the switch on your battery pack is in the off position so the motor doesn't start spinning instantly when you connect these. You also want to make sure you don't get short circuits. You don't want to let these loose ends of the wires bump into each other. Having the battery pack in the off position is sort of a safety against that, but general good habit, you don't want loose wires bumping into each other because if your battery pack is on and those wires touch each other, that will create a short circuit and can make the batteries get very hot. So what we're going to do now is flip the cup over and connect these wires by twisting them together. We are going to go red to red and black to black. Now in this case, it doesn't actually matter if we connect them backwards. If we reverse the wires, that would just make the motor spin in the other direction but it's still good to get in that habit if you're learning to work with circuits of connecting positive to positive and negative to negative. So we're going to take the loose ends of these wires, and if you have access to a soldering iron, you can solder these connections to make them stronger, but for our purposes, just twisting them together nice and tight and then wrapping them with electrical tape to prevent those loose wires from bumping into each other and creating a short circuit is usually going to be good enough. So again, if you have a soldering iron, and you know how to solder or you have adult supervision for help with soldering, you can solder these connections to make them a little sturdier, but twisting them together nice and tight so if you tug on the wires a bit they don't come apart will usually be good enough, but then again we're going to wrap those with electrical tape because we don't want those to bump into each other and create a short circuit. Now I have finished making those connections and wrapping them in tape. As you can see here, when I turn the battery pack on, I should be able to hear the motor spin. What I'm going to do next is use tape to mount the battery pack on the inside of the cup on the opposite side from the motor to help balance the weight and distribute that evenly across the robot's body. And make sure the power switch is facing down. In your final robot, the cup is going to be upside down, and you want to be able to reach up and easily access the power switch. So if you put the battery pack the other way, the power switch is going to be way up here. That's going to be harder to reach to turn your robot on and off. So again, I'm going to use tape 
Put the, put the battery pack right about there so it's opposite the motor and the power switch is facing down. So I now have the battery pack taped in there and again I can access the power switch and when I turn that on I can hear the motor spin. Now that motor shaft spinning on its own is not enough to make your robot vibrate and wobble around. That is where the cork comes in. You are going to take your cork and press it all the way onto the motor shaft, but make sure it's off-center. That off-center vibration is what's going to make your robot wobble. So you don't want to put the cork centered on the motor shaft like this. You want it off-center, maybe about three-quarters of the way like that. And for this part, it'll help if you or if your hands aren't big enough, get an adult. Apply some pressure on the motor from the inside of the cup so you can really press the cork on there because you don't want it to fall off the shaft. So almost all the way. You want to leave a little bit of gap so it's not rubbing against the motor. But when it's on there, as far as you can get it, then it's not going to fall off when it starts spinning. You don't need to use any glue or tape to hold it to the motor. The friction on the shaft should be enough to hold it in place. So your unicorn is starting to take shape. You've just given it a tail that is going to wobble around on the back. Now it needs legs, and that is where your markers are going to come in. You want to take your four markers and tape them around the perimeter of your cup to make the four legs for your unicorn with the tips pointing down because when you remove the caps and turn your robot on, it will then wobble around and make its own art. Once you have the markers attached, you're ready to add decorations like googly eyes and a unicorn horn. Once you've added your decorations, remove the caps from the markers, turn your robot on, put it down on some paper, and watch it go. For written instructions for this and thousands of other fun, hands-on science and engineering projects, visit us online at www.sciencebuddies.org.